Today we're checking out Solash 2. This is an open world sandbox RPG similar to Kenshi or Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode, and we'll see why in a second. Uh, it is a procedurally generated medieval fantasy world with a skill-based progression system, building, crafting, merchants, trades, professions, uh, and it is in early access. More content keeps getting added. It is quite good. Uh, I discovered this game from Splattercat, so, so uh, shout out to Splat, I'm going to echo a lot of the things he said in the idea. You can basically do anything you want in this game, you can go and just attack a town, you can fight the quest giver, uh, you, you can play it just like Kenshi, become more powerful, there really is no goal, which is quite goofy and bizarre and makes for some fun situations uh, where you just do scuffed things that you aren't supposed to in other games. Uh, but yeah, I learned to get started. I've got some of the basics down, but there are still some large gaps in what I know. So we're going to be exploring today. I know how to get mm, the rudiments uh, started, but you'll yeah, let's just dive right in. So first off, we're going to go ahead and generate a world. I'm actually going to just leave these worlds behind. Let's just delete these worlds that I created. Here's a few of them. Uh, it just takes a minute for it to kind of show up. I'm going to make a pretty large world because I think this is advantageous if we should survive for a long time and we will call it um a world there we go uh civilization's handful big let's create it and now it's just generating the world so it creates the landmass kind of like in dwarf fortress you can travel from left to right on the world map we do have a lot of water coverage on this world but it still does appear to be pretty large for our exploration so I'm okay with that, and we will... Okay, now we have to rename it AA World Save. Okay, so now it is creating the world history. So it's going through all of the years. I don't know why it goes to 100, because I just requested 50. I guess if that's if you want to progress history more, that must be what that's for, because otherwise it just seems to generate 100 years of history. Kind of like in Dwarf Fortress, and you can see that many roads have been made. Uh, if you want to go with like a more primitive world, I suppose that is an option. But you have three modes to pick from. You have high fantasy, which is sort of like respawn, very easy kind of mode. Um, character doesn't age, can't die from starvation or dehydration. Skills require two months. This is like kind of baby, uh, so I know. Uh, no, I won't be doing that today. Dark fantasy is kind of the intended way of playing where your character dies. Uh, but the world still exists, or hardcore when the world is destroyed when you die. I, I think I'm going to go with Dark Fantasy. That is a pretty good one to start. Okay, we need a name. I'm thinking like... Okay, so we have created our character Flingle Gon... Flingle Gondle Flingle Gongle. That's his first and last name. You could pick from one of several other races in the game. You could even be a mush man, and they all have different strengths. I think we'll just go with like human, keep it simple for this time. We will do adventuring because adventuring gives you several really useful items. Having a knife and water skin just makes your life extremely easy from the start. Or it can be kind of a pain in the butt if you don't have those. Mace fighting, I've found that the spiked club is actually quite good. And I'm also going to pick pyromancy just because there are certain skills that supposedly are kind of a pain in the butt. And it gives, I mean, if you want to get them otherwise. Also gives us magic access, which is kind of cool. I'm not even going to customize the character. I, I, I could spend the whole day doing this, but I think that is perfectly good. A fur coat and a monocle. That is very nice. Now, you get to go ahead and pick your village. Uh, I wish you could zoom out on this map a little bit more because it is important to be able to be on the main land mass. And it would be nice to see that because if you get on, restricted to a small aisle, it's hard to get off. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not even sure it's possible to. Anyway, I'm going to be an orphan. You could pick from one of several families where you have your whole family tree, and there are advantages to being in a larger family because I guess if you wanted to pick like a certain prof profession, you get access to their things. But I think I will just be grass, orphan, a bastard child, or an orphan of unknown origin. You can hardly rely on family. Okay, so yeah, we're basically just, we're on our own. At Farvar Village. I mean, spawn in here. Uh, we are this kind of like token representation of a character. I'm just going to explain a few UI things. So uh, this is kind of the world around us. It's kind of like Project Zomboid or any other game with that 180 degree view system where here I'm turning. I'm actually taking a turn right here. The game takes place in turns and it uses up like little bits of action points when you turn because other people can move around while we're doing this. 
Uh, we can obviously also move with WASD. We can kind of strafe from left to right. We can even back up, which is a little, like, disconcerting, honestly. Or we could navigate by clicking, which can be kind of useful. Uh, either, both kind of have their applications here. So I'm just going to go ahead and this is the town center. We're in the middle of a town right here. And you can kind of see Minecraft style as if we're looking down from above. Uh, this is a cross section of the village. We can't really zoom up. We could climb up to one of these things. Like there's a staircase we could climb up. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and fill up my water skin. And here we go. We've got 150 extra water to drink from. We've also got 120 food. What is in our inventory? We've got a copper knife. This is going to be useful for scavenging and things like that. When we kill animals and have to skin their corpses. We've also got a little bit of bread in our inventory just to get us started. Now, we are getting hungrier all the time. I'm going to go ahead and move around. Uh, oh, and also, we're going to die a lot. Like, you die a lot in this game. It just happens. It is what it is. The thing is about towns is that a lot of things are just other people's property. And I mean, I could get started on a profession, but I just start of... I, I kind of just want to begin uh, murdering everyone. So, I'm... <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just zoom out. This is this kind of area, but it renders the game one tile at a time. And we'll just tell our character to navigate off to the map edge. Uh, you know, I don't really even have that much money. I do have some statistic points. You know, we could go ahead and spend those right now. Basically, you're not that strong unless if you start off with a decent weapon and you'll be running away from combat a lot. So I think... Um, I think it would be advantageous to begin with strength here. We could also do endurance, 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 or one of the uh, guides I was reading said willpower is also a decent stat. Uh, dexterity. Yeah, I haven't really explored these, but I think I just want to go for a basic, you know, uh, murderer to begin with. That is my profession. Now we could stay back and we could do agriculture or something like that. But I do. I find the whole like look and feel of the game to be quite relaxing like see what if we were stuck on one of these islands anyway uh so things that happen so we could go from village to village but what good would that really do us we're not really i guess we could be a sort of a trader if we wanted to but the main way that you kind of progress in this game is by moving around and finding poi's so that little like uh chime sound was this poi over here now you might have seen that my character satisfied some of his thirst as we went and this is actually refilled our food went down a bit i believe but um he will automatically eat whatever's in his inventory we're gonna go over to this poi because it's an easy difficulty and it's it's likely that we'll we'll be okay for this conflict uh most of these are decent ways to get started you'll probably notice right now that i can't see anything around me again like i could before uh i can turn around but it is in fact night so after midnight we will probably just sleep until morning here Okay, so other UI things that might be a little bit confusing. Uh, red bar is health bar. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Stamina bar is in yellow. We'll start to see this fill up with this kind of brownish color for fatigue. You need to sleep in order to restore that. So that, you know, is a little bit more involved. Uh, you can re uh, excuse me. You can regenerate HP by resting, but it takes quite a lot of rest. Uh, there may be other ways. I actually haven't figured that out yet, but like I said, we're still learning. Hunger is here. Uh, even when you drop to zero, you will enter like starvation mode and then this red bar starts to fill up. So uh, hopefully we won't starve, but it does, yeah, reduces every statistic by two for every level of starvation of starvation. Level. I've just seen him just die from the red bar filling up, so I haven't really noticed that, but yeah. Thirst and dehydration work more or less the same way. And the numbers over here is what's still in your inventory and you can use. Now, you can manually eat, uh, but I mean, it, it it occurs for you automatically, so I don't really see why you do that. I guess if you have to lighten up your inventory or something. Otherwise, um, you can hold down shift to see things in the environment around you. Uh, we get a log over here. Most things are fairly like realistic in their carry weights. Eh, maybe realistic isn't the right word, but one thing that's useful is if we want to see any bushes to kind of forage from, we can look over here on the mini-map, and we've got, uh, you know, berry bushes, strawberries, blueberries, or you name it, any kind of berry, raspberry, maybe even a schnozberry will be there to be had. Is that a bush? That does appear to be a bush. So what is that? That is a raspberry, a raspberry bush. So we'll probably see this, yeah, 132 now. Though picking berries isn't really that great a way to improve. Um, I mean, you know, there are there are more effective ways to get 
food. There's also tons of weird things you can do to level up. Like if I find a ledge over here, let me go see if I can walk up on this. The way you train your athletics skill in this game, or at least one of the guides that I was reading was like, okay, uh, jump off. So this is move, but this is jump off. We'll take some damage. So 80 down from 105. I'm not sure quite how many times we have to do this. I'm probably not going to waste my time right here. But yeah, now I need to like sleep because I'm about to get into a conflict. But if you jump off of a ledge many times, you will level up in athletics, which I just think is a goofy way to level and kind of reminds me of the Kenshi way of leveling. Okay, so we've discovered a suspicious hut. Uh, this is actually a rather difficult encounter, I believe. We are going to find, like, cultists in the basement of this. Let me just see if this wolf comes to attack me. Wolves, wolves are, like, basically your low-level NPCs. Or, like, mobs that you fight. So we do have a skill bar here on the bottom. It's kind of like the Kenshi martial arts system, where you learn new moves as you level up. I'm pretty good at fighting because of my mace wielding and stuff like that. I'm just going to rest here. I'm just going to pass some time as I go by pressing down R. Oh, seeds from planting berries. So I think we need to start our own settlement if we want to... Actually, I'm not sure. You might be able to do it without... I haven't really explored any of the agriculture yet. I've just sort of been like this homeless man running around in nature. That's sort of been my MO as I've played it. But one thing that I find is useful is to just kind of wait in place and see if the enemies come to you because you do run out of stamina pretty fast. So what are these wolves doing? It looks like I've aggroed this one. I just kind of want to fight one right now. Take them on one at a time, and then if we aren't doing too well, then we back off. We're going to have to kind of peel the enemies one by one as we clear out this hut. Because I always find that the view radius that you get is kind of tricky. I should have waited for that one. Oh well, but this encounter isn't that bad. The other thing that I'm kind of watching out for here is there are some enemies that are just super high level. Like, there's an animated scarecrow that will just chase you down and kill you. Uh, I don't... I, I saw him in, like, hunting grounds, too. Some of the areas are labeled as easy, but they're very tricky to get around in. So I, I do hope that they, like, specify that there is a bad man on the loose. Although I do like the unforgiving nature of it. I'm just going to click on him because he's kind of running away right here. So I believe this is all of the wolves around the hut. And if this event works more or less like the other ones that I've played, there should be a basement in this hut. Although I think I'm going to rest either upstairs or outside. Is this like an overhang? That might be why, because I couldn't see under this. Which seems like slightly nonsensical. What is this right here? Flingle Gondle Flingle Gongle has fixed... Picked up uh, five blackberries. Okay, so we're just harvesting from their farm. This is pretty cash money. Now we've got seven... Look, we had all the food that we got. This is the reason why scavenging for uh, corpses is really the best way to start. Another thing I really like here is you've got this kind of CDDA thing going where you can just attack walls. Well, like, you can mine through the walls and CDDA, grab the planks and stuff like that. Although now I have horribly tired myself out. I'm a little bit afraid to go inside of this hut. So let me just rest for a second. Well, you know, I'll look in. But yeah, there is a suspicious stairway downstairs. Uh, it is totally fine to just sleep in one of these beds, though, ironically enough. So I will go ahead and just, uh, yeah, let's go to sleep. Oh, you could even sleep till morning when you're in these beds. That is quite useful. So there we go. So my fatigue from uh, being tired is starting to go away. Uh, it does seem like you get very tired very quickly in this game. So there are stat trees. We'll kind of bark up as we go just to get rid of some of that i'm gonna go ahead and rest until healed actually you know maybe i should have just gone to sleep there that might have been better because you just pass time resting it's kind of like in project zomboid when you do that yeah just sleeping in a random hut nothing wrong with that uh you do have awareness so there is that some games i guess you wouldn't have that but resting until healed again and all right my hp is back up to full the next encounter is Probably going to be. I, I do I do hope for a little bit more encounter variety. I've still seen a lot of them, but... Yeah, so this is like some sort of cult sacrifice altar over here. Okay, and there we go. There's the cultist. This is like that moment in uh, Pulp Fiction with uh, Quentin Tarantino when he finds the, you know, the bad people living in the basement. Okay, so it seems I've aggroed this guy. This is Dina. Wearing a... Yeah, so wearing like basically cult items. 
We're just going to wait here for a second. Actually, I could use Immolate from my Pyromancy to set you on fire. Uh, we have Onslaught as well, so this is going to be on attack dealing. Okay, so this is, is technically an attack. There are some that kind of... There's one called, like, Bushido in the sword fighting line where you just kind of prepare yourself. So let's just go ahead and rest here. Who has backed up into me. <laughs> okay. I will use... What is this? Onslaught? Yeah, let's use that. Now, you actually have a lot of health. You have 70 health. All those wolves before had, like, 50. So... And I do believe in this particular encounter, at least when I played it the other day, there were... There were two cultists. Okay, so we're just going to don the cultist robes. Because why not? Like, why not start there, right? <laughs> um, so, oh god, we don't actually have a second NPC in here. Unless if they're hiding somewhere. Plain hat and suspicious hut has been completed. Ooh, cool, we got some greaves. Strong wood protects your tibia. Fantastic. That's your leg bone. The reason I know that is because I broke my tibia when I was in high school, and it was horrible. Don't break your tibia. Aw, oh, unfortunately this is technically not considered a helmet. So how does this one do better? Resist holy, resist fire. So this doesn't actually do as well with fire. Ah, oh, this one resists physical. That seems pretty useful. This is actually not as good at resisting fire, but does it resist... Resist death. Oh, I guess death is like a damage type there. Okay, I will put on the greaves. This... We actually do worse against fire. That is kind of cool. I do believe, like, I've seen some mods about all the different... Oh, yeah, this game has a pretty good workshop presence. I saw, like, uh, Electromancy and all these other school kill, uh, skill trees. It just seems pretty neat. Like, very... Maybe due to the kind of bare-bones nature of how the game looks and feels a la Dwarf Fortress. Um, I don't know, it just seems to lend itself to better modding, and I do like that. All right, let's sleep until, um... Yeah, you know, we've got a little bit of daylight left, although I'm missing some health. I don't want to run into some random NPC and just die, which that does happen in this game, so. But don't get it twisted. I do like that. That aspect of it. Okay, so we've got plenty of food and water. I just kind of want to wait until daylight to go back out again. Because um, it does seem like there's some good foraging to be done in here. I will close the door, and then I will say, let's sleep until morning. Might as well get some light. Yes, that's very humorous. <laughs> Another bone uh, for those of you who who were out of the joke. Where is your humorous? Is that on your arm? <laughs> no, it's on your funny bone. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that's so funny. Wow. Anyway, it is a good time, but yeah, uh, once again, we are streaming to Twitch with this, so if you guys have any tips and tell me I'm just doing anything wrong, uh, actually, wait, maybe I will ask for some more backseating as we start to get to more of the content that I just do not know about. I think I'm just going to go ahead and gather up some berries here. A berry gatherer. I guess we'll just go to the map edge again here. What I've found is a pretty decent way to progress in this game, at least to start. Uh, aside from just the skill cheeses, you know, I guess this is sort of like the intended gameplay method. You get a quest. The one thing that we didn't get here was a friendly NPC, because sometimes they'll tell you about uh, nearby encounters. Actually, what I, what I could do is go back to a town to talk to someone and just ask about nearby things going on. Let's do that. Let's try going back to Farvar Village. Again, you kind of automatically replenish your thirst. There are certain positions where you can, like, do it manually. We are in the day. It's an ambush. Wait, what? You think I'm going to ambush you? Okay, red highlighted things are illegal. You'll be breaking the law if you do them. Let's converse. Uh, ask for anything interesting nearby. So there are tons of different things. We'll just learn about all of them and they'll position them on our map. We'll do a little bit of goods trading. What else have we got? Uh, I do believe you could get rich through like some sort of arbitrage in this game. A la what is going on right here. Um, I am going to just, I will sell the wolf furs just because it seems to me that the money is probably more useful here. I do believe you need a hundred gold to start up a settlement. Um, it's kind of odd. I guess it's sort of like a taxpayer establishment thing. Uh, yeah, there we go. Trade. One thing that is good is, uh, technically not you, but uh, I've noticed a lot of the traders just have a ton of food in town, so you can't really... You could sort of, like, RP as a townsperson, which is kind of fun, I suppose. 
All right, that was the main thing I wanted to do in town. There are other places where you can get training. Uh, you know, I don't have a home. I don't necessarily know. Could you, like, buy a house in a town? Does anybody know? Because otherwise, I would gladly start my own settlement. I guess it's just all these people running around at night. Okay, so it is morning again. What have you got to say? Uh, you can also ask for directions to things. Ask for directions. They'll tell you where to go in town. Ask for trainers in town. All right. Does anybody have anything useful to us? We have axe fighting, sword fighting, carpentry, agriculture, adventuring. Um, we are just kind of getting adventuring passively here. So I think... What is your training? Okay. Uh... Oh, so you actually are the... Tra okay, so you're marketing your internet entrepreneur course. And it's only, what? $5,000? Sign me up. Of course, yeah. Totally. I want to start uh, drop shipping right away. <laughs> like the kind of... Like the gurus of... Uh... <laughs> I love how everyone is just a guru now. Fantastic. All right, um, what else should we do? So we've got, uh, I don't really like these webbed encounters, but they are labeled as easy. I guess if we just kind of stay on the periphery, this would be a good way to get experience. Just continue fighting people and getting more abilities because we don't really have too much to begin with. So what are those? Sh uh, more raspberries. Grab those. Though we have plenty of food and water. Our water skin can hold uh, 150. I've been making sure to scavenge everything as we go. The one drawback of spiders is that uh, they don't really... I don't believe they have any meat for us. Like, this is the reason why I look for ambushed caravans, because you get a, a good, you could sell it, and then you could go to a trader, and you get the meat of the wolves. Wolf meat is what you subsist on entirely to begin the game. It looks like there are some... Oh, we've got wolves and spiders. Okay, I will fight the wolves then, maybe. Whoops, I've accidentally stepped onto a spider web. I'm just going to gather that and kind of stay on the periphery because I don't want to maneuver in such a way that they will see me. Maybe I could aggro one of them from afar. I don't want to get right into the middle of all of them. Okay, cool. We've aggroed a wolf. I'm just going to back away for a second. Uh, and then we will use this. So we did unlock one of our abilities so far. Oh, I don't have enough stamina. Ah, man, I, you know, I really should have rested. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself. It would be kind of nice if you had a little bit more visual feedback on your character rather than just the meters. I think that would be nice. Okay, so cool. We got some adventuring here. What is behind me? Is this a tree? Okay, I'm just going to stand over here. Okay, somebody is chasing me. As you can probably tell. I don't know if this is a stronger enemy or something, so I don't want to be stupid because if it is like some wicked scarecrow man... That would be bad. I just kind of want to go over here and sleep for the night. So I will go to sleep, which is totally fine. You can just get woken up. It's not really like they can... Uh, I guess you would be kind of surprised for your AP if they did get you, but... He didn't chase me, so I'm okay. It was probably just a wolf or a spider or something. Some of the enemies can be rather relentless as well. Hey, Akio Amajiki. Uh, Thanks for coming out. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Oh, I've accidentally stepped to a spider web again. Alright, so more spider webs happening here. And we've got a giant spider. Now, giant spider might sound scary to the average layman, but it, it is in fact not that bad. See, he took out only like 4 HP. So not so bad. Okay, moss men are a little bit stronger, so I'm going to try to avoid that moss man. Maybe we'll eventually fight him if we could just isolate him. But I think for now, this is fine. Whoops, had to rest. Sometimes you have to like rest in the middle of combat just to regain your stanima. St stanima. Okay, and the moss man is coming for me. Not good, uh, but he is faster than me, so I just sort of have to fight him. I'm just going to spam all of my abilities... It's a good thing that we stayed in the middle because here comes another one. Oops, I accidentally got into a spider web again. I should probably look where I'm going. But yeah, he tends to fatigue me and I am afraid of him. They're slightly stronger than the other enemies and if a lot of them gang up on you, that's not good. Okay, so our hit goes from 53-53 to 56-56. Um, funny that you don't get a range, I suppose. Stanima would be good. Stanima. 
<laughs> Stamina. <laughs> Stamina. Uh, although I personally feel like just a good offense is the best. Is a defense, but a defense isn't an offense. So let's start there. And then after that, we'll build up our HP and stuff like that better. I just need to make sure I'm actually bonking them in combat. And then we'll go from there. See, there goes the Moss Man. He's very fast. Now, there are things... You can also go ranged. You like... There's enemies that throw stones at you. There's, like, baboons that will throw... Oh, God. Okay, no. I have peeled off two Moss Men. Uh, let me just back away one so that I fight them one at a time. The other one will have a little bit of a harder time getting against this tree. And hopefully I'm not dead here. Let me just use my other abilities. Ignite him. All right, and now maybe fight one more, and hopefully this is not a moss man behind me. Okay, good, it is just a giant spider. Oh, thank God, it's just a giant spider. As you can see, like, this is the reason I'm being very cautious in combat, because I have started up many characters that just die immediately. They just sort of face plant and then just insta-die. Uh, so there is that. And I do want to loot this place because the spider webs are worth a little bit of money, and that is kind of nice. Cool, we've got a river here, too. Can we uh, refill our drink? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we're taken care of for food and drink, so we're kind of sustaining right here. Uh, other than that, though, my fatigue... Fatigue really is a killer. Like, we're kind of playing as a... Like, a, a narcoleptic... A narcoleptic... Uh, uh, spider murderer, man. Like, <laughs> I have a lot of issues. I must really have... I must have, like, low... Blood cell, ca or what is the thing you get where it makes you tired all the... Yeah, you know what I mean. God, this is like Neo Scavenger. Just fight a man and wrestle him so that you can get his pants, you know? I love that in a game. There's just something that reminds me of the old, like... <laughs> back when indie gaming was a little bit newer and a little bit less saturated as a market. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, the <laughs> just that horribly scuffed energy, yeah. Um, can I ignite you from here? I do want to aggro your... Aggro you. There we go. Okay, I will rest. Just let you come over to me. Good, our mace fighting has risen. And we also get another statistic point. Alright, um, I will continue building strength 56, 56 to 59, 59. I guess we'll get that to about 20. And then after that, we'll level up our other stats. So I'll start to go in a little bit further. The moss men aren't around any longer. This pyromancy bit actually seems like a decent way to level here. Continue fighting that. I just want to make sure there's no more moss men around. Whoops. Accidentally turned an extra time there. But I like that when you're kind of managing every little facet of your movement, you know? Even your little turns themselves. And I do. I think it should cost a little bit of AP to turn, but not like a whole turn. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh... Uh... Ironically, those were homophones right there. It takes a turn to turn. <laughs> I put the turn in my turn for your turn, Turner. All right, so now we can go ahead and... Well, we'll wait till the end to scavenge more because that does kind of require more AP. Uh, I don't want to get ambushed by moss men, though. Okay, you're just a, just a giant spider. Nothing to worry about here. Now, I haven't looked more deeply into the AP system, like... Does it cost more to go up on a hill or something like that? I suspect that it does. In some alternate mode of the universe. This Okay, cool. Our pyromancy has risen. Now we get a kind of a cool ability called Dragon Breath. So we can, you know, unleash a cone of fire. Let's do that on the spider webs and see if that does anything. Not really. Did a little bit of damage to them. Seems like we need to level it a little bit more. I'm basically a firebender. Hmm. I think it would be kind of cool to do this. I guess you don't really have... Do you have mana? I don't really see any mana. Dragon Breath, a.k.a. not brushing your teeth. <laughs> yeah, if you don't do it long enough, eventually you develop superpowers. You, like, turn into a mutant like one of the X-Men. All right, uh, let's see. You do also get, like, a good um, combat dialogue here. I haven't really used that too much. Uh, I think you can customize the font as well. I would kind of like it to be pixelated. Can I do that? Yeah, let's have a pixelated font. Uh, secondary font. Romulus. I kind of like that. 
Ah, oh, that's kind of sweet. What is the other one? We had Lato, Basic. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I like that. It's a little harder to read, but it actually it is slightly more straining to my eyes. I will continue with Lato like a boring person again. You can also make the font bigger, too, if you want, depending on what uh, screen you're playing on. Amazing. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and just sleep. It is still kind of the middle of the... Eh, maybe we'll just rest until we're healed, rejuvenate a little bit, and then we'll live with lower stamina, and then we'll sleep at night. We'll just try to eliminate a few more of them. There's quite a lot of enemies in these nests. It, it really does feel like a lot. Okay, so here, actually technically out of range. I will breathe fire on you. There we go. And then just rest here until you come to me because I'm starting to run low on energy for the day. Okay, cool. Yeah, so right as uh, the sun sets, I have killed the last of the spiders. Now, the reason why I'm very cautious is because it's usually not just those enemies. Like I said, there will be some kind of murder scarecrow that comes out of nowhere, like reanimated scarecrow. Uh, there was some other horrible occult thing that just came out of nowhere. So it's not technically just... Like, even the cultist room, you know? There's some weird stuff afoot in this game. And I do... I do kind of enjoy the NPC variety. It is... It is of that kind of, like, you know, ambushed by cannibals variety. Here we go. This doesn't seem to be doing that much damage for us, but again, you level your skills by using them, so we kind of have to use pyromancy if we want to get better at it. It would be kind of sweet to play as some, like, crazy firebender here. But it seems as though that, I don't know, based on pyromancy, like, won't there be other types of mancying? Watermancy? Dirtmancy? Rockmancy? Um... Pelosi Nancy, uh, I don't know. You could, you could, you could have quite a lot of them, probably. Here we go. More, more statistic points. All right, fantastic. Hydromancy, no. Dirt Mancy, Dirt Mancy. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? Fantastic. Ah. Uh, yeah, negative Nancy. All of the Nancys. Or Mancy's. All right, here we go. So we've eaten a little bit more. The sound effects here are quite satisfying. And I think that uh, we haven't really talked about sound or graphics. I do. You know, there's something like I kind of like minimal UI. And I know that uh, there's a couple little. I mean, it'd be nice if you could actually see your gear on your character. That would be sweet because you do have this avatar that is like kind of begging. Dress me. Dress me. Senpai. You know. It would be fun if you could see that on your character. I think that would be quite cool. Although I think the subtle bob for movement is good because I think these types of games appeal to people where the content is deep and the graphics are light. Okay, cool. So we've got the chest. Every quest seems to end when you get the chest. Webbed forest is complete. Uh, we will fill up our inventory soon enough. Spider's yarn. Actually getting a decent selling price if we... I mean, there's tons of it, so why not just take it? Bring it back to town, sell it, and then maybe buy something actually useful with that money. I'm kind of going really slow, because remember, when you get permadeath, like, if you slightly bite off more than you could chew, you're dead forever. So I do enjoy it when you kind of play the game, you know, more or less as if it were your own life. It kind of just leads to more subtle RP. Also getting kind of like an Oblivion vibe from the music, man. Wow, that's actually rather unfortunate. I auto-moved off the map and it just sent me directly into a web. A couple of little things like that with some... I don't know, I guess some pathfinding. Like, I'll be standing right next to an enemy and he doesn't get aggroed to me. And I'm... I kind of want him to get aggroed toward me. Let me just pick some of these berries before I get going. I've not played Soul Ash 1, but I've heard that you can just go a little bit crazier on all the enemies in it like you know like you can like you can you just kill everyone around you and that is like the dominant strategy uh although now i want to play it after this i think it had been on my radar for a while but i've something about the character tokens that just made me feel like okay i can wrap my head around what's going on here ask for directions do you know anything Let's see what there is. Snug Rags Shop. Oh, the fishing hut. I wonder, that might be useful. 
Because if you get a fishing pole, I do believe that's basically like an infinite food source. There are multiple fishing huts in town. Okay. Hey, let's go over there. So the selected building is marked on the minimap. Okay, so this is the fisher hut. Maybe he'll be selling some type of fish. Oh, we just have two men sitting next to a chest in here. All right. Nice day for fishing. In it, me bruv. <laughs> in it, bruv. All right. Uh, I will trade goods. I guess I will sell them the glow, uh, glowing ceremonial dagger. We're kind of a mace boy already, so. I don't know. Though. Is this? I feel weird using a cultist dagger. Hit 30, parry plus 10%. Uh, one to, let me just go double check this here. 6 to 10 physical. So it seems like we're doing a lot. It, mine does already electrical damage, though. Wow. 1 to 4, 2 to 4. Intelligence plus 1. 6 to 10. Uh, I feel like mine is better, even though that it doesn't have as good a hit. Yeah, let's just keep that. Okay, yeah, you can totally have this. All right, you will take my glowing ceremonial dagger, and we will sell you also all of this spider's yarn. Now, there may be a better place to sell this, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll fi I figure I'll get better at comparing every trader as we go. Uh, humanoid... Wow, this guy is willing to buy human bones from me. Interesting. Uh, I will make you a fisher of men. Why is there no... Fishing gear being sold. I guess we're not like with Willy in uh, Stardew Valley anymore, right? Solash One, you're just an evil god that. Ca now I more badly than ever want to play Solash One after having experienced this, though. I love that when that kind of energy seeps its way into games. You know, I'm not planning on doing any farming anytime soon. What is guano bat poop? Yeah. So we'll put that in. Nettle plant seed, uh, yeah, we'll just sell all of that, too. I'm basically just an adventurer is kind of how I'm playing this. Raspberry seed. I do believe we can also cook the food, so, like, meat. You don't just have to eat raw meat. Uh, maybe I'll see if I could do that in town or something. All right, what about you? Trade goods. Do you have any type of... Oh, no, you just have everything that the other guy had. Oh, well. Um, let's also just see if we can... Can we interact with this? Let's just look at this. No, we can't interact with this. It might be because I don't own this. Um, although there is more, like, crafting and stuff. I guess we could go out into the world and see if we could find an axe or something. Yeah, let's go ask for more directions in town, see if we can find other NPCs. Mm. Chat with you. All right, uh, Harding Habmer, Occupation Fisher. Oh, wait a minute, you're also a fisher. Maybe you have something. Also, woodcutters can make decent money, I believe. I mean, you could just be a guy who's living his life, you know, earning an honest living, cutting wood down in the forest and bringing it back, selling it to people, merchants in town. So you are a woodcutter. Trade goods. All right, you also just have a maple log. It seems like the people standing next to each other just share their items. Like properties determined by proximity or something. Um, hmm. Now, we could probably start our own settlement soon, too. How much gold do we have? Is that actually on our UI? We have 70 gold, so we'll need more. I guess we could keep going on more quests if we want to do that. We've already completed the web area. We could go back there and gather things up. Although I'm kind of feeling like... Oh, what is this out here? Gloomy Village. Hard. Probably a terrible encounter. There are, like, fishmen that you could fight and stuff like that. Though this is kind of a long way to get to the next settlement. How much food do we have? Food and water. 681 and 150. So that is a lot, but this is quite a distance between these two towns. Um, eh, though I would like to get more POIs. Basically, when we run out of POIs, we just kind of run out of things to do. Let's leave. We'll come back later. Now, we could harvest some of this other stuff, I believe, but if we... Oh, wait a minute. No, we can totally do it with this one. I wonder why. Is this, like, public food? public food. Oh no, this is cotton. This doesn't have a, an illegal uh, indicator over it. Am I just totally allowed to gather like municipal cotton? Cotton is worth a little bit of money, so if we do this... Wow, we are just kind of living the life of a farmer. A again, cotton I believe is a very difficult plant to harvest. You need to like... 
you need to be able to mind control it. Uh, no, no lie. I, I think I learned this in like social studies. Trade goods. Yeah, how expensive is the cotton? So two for 3.21. If we could find a trader who's willing to pay more for this, though. Though that's 6.43, and all of our gold up to this point is just given us 70. So that is actually a decent trade value. Plus, these guys have fish meat, so every piece of cotton that we get is worth around, uh, actually a little over one uh, meat. Yeah, let's see if we can raise some gold. You know, let's just take a, a brief detour. We'll just be a cotton farmer for a minute. Oh, I love farming for cotton. My fingers hurt, and it feels bad. And it's very tiring, but I want to see if I can level up in agriculture or something like that. I'm not sure if this is actually going to get it for us. Um, or we have to be like actively farming, but it is also a decent way to make money, so let's just give it a shot. All right, we've uh, we've sold some cotton in town here, and we've made over 100 gold, so that is nice. If we want to start up a settlement, we could. I suppose. Uh, where do we do that? Let's just keep on going along the road. I don't really want to go to another spider forest because I, I do think they're kind of tricky to attack. I would rather get more of these. Well, this was a house. I'm thinking we'll find like an ambushed caravan somewhere along the line here. Although your food can run out fast, so you got to be careful with that. It's very easy to die of starvation. I could check this PLI. We don't really know what it is. So let's see if we can go to the town, maybe hear for some rumors. Uh, or check around, see if anybody knows anything about it. What's going on in the nearby area? Anything interesting going on nearby? Okay, so we do have a lot of things. Um, are there any trainers in town, though, too? Agriculture, axe fighting, uh, sword fighting. Eh, still not really anything I'm looking for. Say farewell. Hmm. What else can we do? We do also have a big... Uh, Oh, we've actually got all the NPCs in the game. That is so many people to keep track of. Look at them all. We've got our skills screen. Uh, and you do have, like, all the different skills that you unlock as you go here. So, you know, uh, sleep faster. Ooh, that is quite useful. Uh, once you reach adventuring level 7, you can learn more recipes. Kind of like a runescape -y type of vibe about this. I do like that. It's nice to be able to play some sort of single-player runescape-like kind of deal. What is this? Like, is this a spermatozoa? What is that? Or just a water droplet? <laughs> uh, what, it, what is that? Oh, cool. Torch. That could be useful for navigating dark areas. Oh, yes, yeah, stat points. Thank you for that. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops-a-daisy. A protection, though. Some of these, I feel like we should explore some more of the trees, you know. And there are some non-violent ones where it would be nice to just, like, build a house and then go back out into nature. Uh, cool. Oh, interesting. We actually can't see past the line of sight of this. What is this one, though? What time of day is it? No, it is day. Hmm. All right, so we do have an ambushed caravan over here. We have a cave over here. Caves I've found to be a bit of a pain. Uh, and then lots of things over on that other opposite landmass. What is that? A rebel camp. Oh, yeah. Troublesome difficulty, so we won't go over there for a little while. Attacked caravan, though, is a pretty good, like, early level thing. Ooh, you could just leave the region by clicking there. I did not see that. That is nice. Yeah, it looks like, it kind of looks like a mana. You know, health is red, mana is blue, but not this time. This time it's thirst. The thirst. 411 food. I think we will go over to one of these water areas right here. And have we... Yeah, we have filled back up our water container. So we'll go over here. This is one of the kind of more classic early encounters. I'm not sure, like, how far we'll get. But I I, I intend to be very careful. I thought I would be dying repli re repletedly. Uh, but I, I think that is kind of an under-satisfying viewing experience. So I would rather... Kind of go for a slow build. We've got a little bit of an amber deposit over there. Let's just kind of check around because sometimes there are like murderer men nearby and that is not too particularly great and they will chase you very fast. So I want to just stay at the periphery, see if I can spot any troublesome NPCs. Um, kind of like in real life what you would do. A little bit of a Neo Scavenger vibe about this. Uh, I guess is this another ambushed caravan over here? Okay, no, we've got people over there. I guess I could go for, like, the thievery skill tree and sneak around. 
Although I haven't really tried that play. I've just sort of tried the Viking attack everything play style. All right, uh, let's just set this guy ablaze so that he gets aggroed. Cool. I've already brought him down to like 44 HP and dropping. Do you, do you have some sort of burn going on with you? I guess not because you're not really taking any more damage. We'll just burn everyone again. The temptation to be an archer and just kite everything is great. And there are bows you can find. There are like skeleton enemies. I think one thing that's great about this kind of minimal graphic style is it is very seemingly easy to add in more, you know, like NPCs, enemies, and stuff like that. And I kind of value that a little more. Although the one thing I think would be nice would be to highlight over an enemy just because there are areas that are difficult. But right now you just kind of get wolf. Like, beware, wolves often hunt in packs. Okay. Great, but how strong is this enemy? That would be kind of a nice tool tip to know. And I feel like that could be done in a similar way to the, uh, the other thing. Although, I, I don't know, I do like roguelikes of that nature where you kind of learn more about the world as you die. And there is something, like, novel about... Ooh, straw straw hat! <laughs> what? It's a straw straw hat, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> this is my sword sword. What are you talking about? My metal metal sword. Fireflies in a jar. Ooh. Like ingredients for magical recipes. Not very good for resisting fire. Does it give me any more resist physical? Uh, holy. Juicy sweet apple. That sounds very like sensual, that description of that apple. All right, uh, if you say so. I guess it is. Let's just keep skinning corpses over here. Some of them humans, some of them wolves. I don't really know what I'm going after. And yes, those are like severed arms and legs, like very minimal representations of what might have... <laughs> Why is it that ever at every single caravan, like the attacker just insists upon dismemberment? <laughs> they will know that the dismemberer came. I will sign you up for your dismembership. Hmm. It would be nice if there were just some way to make a loud noise as well, like shouting. I don't believe I have that option. Do I key map? There are some things that you can do. Like the movement is very involved. For a game with movement that involved, it would be very cool if you could like, I don't know, yell kind of like with Q and Z I, I feel like I've, compared to Zomboid a lot here. Um, not really even that they're comparable in that sense, but just to attract over an NPC. All right, I guess I'll talk to you. They came out of nowhere. Why were they all kind of walking around and like just letting you survive though? <laughs> I, I find that to be rather funny. We have an uh, suspicious, I, I would go to another suspicious hut. I had a great time at the suspicious hut the last time I went. Okay, cool. That's over there. What is that one? Dokustes town. I guess it's the total wealth of the town, 559,000. I just keep fighting people, though, from here. Okay, now we do have elevation levels. I don't think we've extensively done anything on this, but this is a, like, sort of plateau. I guess I'll just keep jumping down here. We received 25 damage. I just want to see if we can, like, level up our athletics super fast here, because that might be useful to have. Uh, we could do that again. We take another 25 damage. Just from... <laughs> oh, no. I have jumped off of a small cliff four times. I am dead. I, I love these types of games. I'm saying all of this totally unironically. I actually really do enjoy that about... Oh, no. There is a wolf directly across from me. Now you get attracted to my presence. Okay, cool. Plus one to pyromancy. Um, I think we will go for that even 20 strength, like I said, and then we'll start to level up some other skill areas. Or maybe they are, like, waiting for me to do something stupid. I haven't really gotten too involved with the enemy AI here. Let's just keep jumping off the cliff. Now, is there a way that I can see my particular stat? Uh, oh, cool. You actually can see. Okay, so athletics is at 38.10%. Progress, 8 out of 21. It'd be nice if there were, like, a slightly... Actually, is there a way you can bring up the stat screen a little bit faster? Open crafting, open inventory. 
Book of Abilities, V. Oh, okay, you can. Cool. Maybe K. Or maybe C. Uh, maybe try S. No, S is that. Uh, skills. Okay, hang on a second. Kind of odd. Uh, there doesn't seem to be one for skills. Like, you have one for all of your other abilities. Maybe V? V? Yeah, I feel like that should be... Map. Does <laughs> you have one for every other screen. That's kind of funny, because that's really the one I would... Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is it. Never mind. Book of Abilities is V. Okay, now I remember it. I am a dingus. Ignore me. All right, but, okay, athletics, yeah, it would be nice to level up my athletics, because what do we get there? Drag an item as, after you as you walk. Now, there are, like, certain recommendations. The guide that I've been referencing recommends that you keep jumping off of a cliff if you want to, like, uh, level your... <laughs> if you want to level your athletics. What are some of the other ones? Uh, agriculture is harvesting wild plants. Um... Cutting a tree or a log or finding a corpse. My favorite one is throw a corpse or a log back and forth in order to level your athletics when you reach a high enough level. Okay, so we were at 38% there. Now what are we at? 47%. So we get about 10%. So we just need to jump off of this cliff maybe like eight more times until we are improved. I'm just going to, like, rest each time, though, because I don't want to do anything really stupid if an NPC just sneaks up on me. I hear somebody over there. Whatever, I'm going to do it again. Is someone trying to sell me something over there? No, I guess not. All right, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I'll just keep jumping off of this slightly high ledge in order to improve my mile time. All right, we will rest. Now, I've noticed sometimes, like, when I was sleeping in the cannibal hut, when there were cannibals just below me, they don't seem to traverse Z levels, so there is that. So you could just, like, be like, there are cannibals downstairs. That's fine. And then they won't come up and bother you. Like, oh, he's upstairs. We shouldn't bother him. But it is there. Oh, it seems that the blue bar is actually representative of your progress to the next level. I did not notice that. I thought that was overall progress. Very nice. Very nice. Cool. All right, so now I have improved my athletics. Is there a point where I get my stat point up? Because it would be nice if I could just cheese this. This is useful up till about level one. Okay, so now we want to cut a tree to get a log or find a corpse that weighs more than 20. Right-click and drag. Uh, I'm just referring to the Steam Guide by... Uh, who is this by? By Draken. D-R-A-K-E-N. A Solash Guide. It is very useful. Cutting down a tree... Uh, so, dragging around a corpse. Okay, I mean, I could do that. I could kill this guy. That wouldn't be, like, you know, completely awesome. But the corpse needs to weigh more than 20. So, what is this way? I do believe we get weight statistics on these things. Um, athletics experience up to level 5. Um, I wonder if we could do this with, like, one of these things. No, melee attack. We could just find a log. Yeah, let's find something to drag around. <laughs> Sounds interesting enough. Oh, God. It's just like the scuffed gameplay begins here. <laughs> yeah, then I dragged around a log. This is like in Kenshi when you just have to level from running away from crazy people. Though we do have 999 food now. That is quite good. Let's just keep going around the world because those encounters look a little bit more advanced over there. Here we go over to this town. Hello, are there any corpses around that I can drag? I will chat with you. Ask for directions. Whoops, you don't really have any good information. Directions? Uh, why doesn't anyone want to tell me about world rumors? I'm just getting directions around town right here. Uh, can someone help me? Trainers. I don't really want to know about any of the trainers in town. I guess we just have to kind of keep exploring over here. I'll talk to maybe one or two more people from different... Page, uh... Trainers in town, trade goods. What do you have for trade goods, anyway? I guess I could trade you my straw hat. It's relatively worthless. Yeah, I don't want to burn with it. Okay, we'll take humanoid bones as well. Trade. Whatever. I'm leaving. I'm leaving! Maybe we should find some fishmen and kill them. 
you know, and then drag around their bodies throughout the town in order to improve our strength. <laughs> oh, man. Have I played Stone Shard? Yeah, I like Stone Shard. I haven't been back to it in a while, though. All right, so we're just going to go find POIs the old-fashioned way. What is this? Bardom Keep. Now, there are stones around there, but I guess a log would be kind of more useful. You know, I guess I could just go into the middle of the woods. I just don't want to go out into the middle of the woods for nothing, though. And my hunger keeps dropping. All right, let's head back toward other encounters in case if we don't manage to find anything. This is just what a... Oh, this is a rabbit hole. I've been to a rabbit hole. It's not that interesting. It's just sort of like... It's a little bit Alice in Wonderland. But, um... Man, we are getting, like, such a paucity of encounters here. I kind of want to go to the cannibal hut, because we're definitely going to find a guy there. And probably a bad guy, and then we could drag around his body. Okay, we'll go to enter region. Are we starving now? We are not starving. Somehow, I guess we must have foraged food in our travels. I'm not quite sure how, but we'll probably find some bodies here that we could drag around after this. All right, so you've... You've been through this drill. You know what the cannibal uh, house is like. One more time, shall we, for old time's sake? <laughs> is there a holy nation to dismantle? God, I really hope that there is. Yeah, the more, like, scuffed lore that is added to these games, the better. Although I think the one thing... This is one thing about Kenshi. Kenshi is a game that's harder to make repeated YouTube content on because it's a static world. Unless if you really mod it up, in which case, even still. Oh, we have moss men at the Suspicious Hut. Now, they are pretty strong, so, like, be careful with them. Uh, do they actually have, like, resistances and stuff? I mean, I would assume that they are not as resistant to fire, because they are made of moss. So there is that to consider. Whoops, I didn't actually mean to rest there. All right, whatever, I've aggroed this one. I don't want to fight too many of them at once, so let's just fight this guy. Okay, and you didn't particularly like that either. I think I'm just going to run away because I don't want to aggro more NPCs, but I could take on two. I think if it's about it, though. If the dungeon crawler fate, the entire series is like $20 on Steam. Hey, what's up, Modern Totem? How you doing? Man... No, okay. Thank you. Man, anytime I go down one of these rabbit holes, pun intended, like the deeper, the deeper I am taken. How you doing, man? Ooh. Ooh, that's the stuff. Been watching your vids on YT forever, but have never caught a stream. All right, we got Happy a third Friday. one in. Hey, Jesus Crust Pizza Party. <laughs> Thanks very much for the 500 bits. Doing pretty well, honestly, like, uh, it's been going. I don't want to die right here, man. Uh, I guess I could run away, though I think that the moss men will catch me because they're fast. Ooh, I've got only 22 left. Am I dead? Wait a minute, okay, I have to spend a statistic point. Um, I'm going to give myself some endurance here. See if that brings up my health bar. Ah, uh, no, it didn't really, uh... Um, I may have to run here and see if I, yeah, yeah, he is already faster than me. I'm, I think I'm dead. Dude, I'm dead. Oh no, I'm totally not dead. I have three HP left. Whew. I really thought that that was the end. Thank you. I do, I do appreciate the sub and the bits. I do, uh. I think that slightly distracted me. I was like, ah, oh. I've seen Totem in a minute. How are you, Totem? I'm doing well. Apparently, I am very... Oh, yeah, there we go, streamer blindness. Okay, I'm going to hide and cower in fear for a couple of days. Ooh. God, the mouth chewing sounds is the greatest. I am become Moss, destroyer of worlds. Right, uh, this is, uh, but I feel as though that is actually a pretty good thing to see because this game can very quickly go from like la 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 la, I'm skipping through the woods to just I'm dead, like immediately, and that is my experience when playing it. I think I died a total of about eight or twelve times, and the only reason I'm doing, like, I wouldn't even consider myself to be doing particularly well right now. I'm just sort of doing average. Nice. I logged into the stream just as you started talking about mouth sounds ten point one zero. 
Oh, awesome. Hey, I fall down lad. Oh, God, I like your name. I fall down ladders. Thank you very much for this. Uh, appreciate you. Yeah, I mean, like, we could eat an entire banana on stream, but, you know, time's a wasting. So this one weighs 60. Man, the moss men are, in fact, large. Well, you know, let's stick it to the other moss men, and let's go ahead and just drag their bot, drag his body around. Oh, cool. This is kind of sweet. This is a little bit like uh, CDDA. Oh, awesome. I'm dragging around someone's body. Oh, this is a way faster way to level the athletics. Hang on a second. I got to see this. Okay, my athletics is leveling yet again. Let's just get a ton of statistic points so that we can increase our strength and endurance for the next fights. Oh, and I have no food left. It's been the last days dragging around the dead body of a man I just killed. <laughs> oh, God. Um, eh, I will take my athletics higher. What is that? That gets us to level five. And then after that, uh, throwing the corpse back and forth <laughs> is going to get us uh, the last of our levels. Okay, so that's probably enough strength. Let's get some more endurance just so we have a little bit more sustain in combat. And then I think willpower is also useful. So what does each one do? Strength, uh, weapon damage. Uh, a chance to parry. Carry weight is a big one. Time required for certain actions. Uh, stamina cost. So that is all useful. Dragging and climbing. That is important. Okay, so endurance improves physical resistance. Fatigue. Yeah, fatigue is pretty important. We keep getting hit with that. Uh, increase maximum health. That is probably the big one. Stamina cost of making a base attack. That is a big one as well. And bonus health regeneration. So that's going to take us less time, save us more food. So yeah, endurance is probably the next one. But then also willpower is pretty good. Uh, Non-physical resistances. Fatigue reduction during sleep. Um, stamina through rest. And health regeneration per tick. And improves hearing. The other ones, I think, are a little bit more specialized. We kind of want to start with... Oh, yeah, that is a stat point. My bad. I hadn't seen that sprite until just now. So let's go through and improve, I think, our endurance by two. We'll go for strength, then endurance. And I should probably let go of this thing now. How do I actually let go? Oh, God. I think I'm just going to grab the corpse into my... It is too heavy to pick up, but I am still dragging it. I guess I could scavenge it. Yeah, there are other moss men nearby. I'll just do that. I don't know how to put it down. I'm stuck. Help me. <laughs> We'd all love to learn to let go. <laughs> I want to listen to this. Uh, I'm an adult among the human race. So I guess you do age. I do believe a year in this game is 100 days. Let me just back away. I got to sleep till morning. I really don't want to do an attack at night because I feel as though they'll all ambush me. Ooh, are you winning, son? Mm. Mm, that's the stuff, yeah. All right, we got a wolf here, although I, I live in perpetual fear of the moss men. So let me just breathe fire on him. Man, he's like... I wonder if he's going to alert the other moss men. That could be like an interesting NPC behavior. I feel as though the minimal UI and like graphics kind of lends itself to more interesting NPC behaviors, you know? That can happen in these types of games. I gotta remember, don't just, like, rush toward an enemy, although sometimes they get aggroed. Everyone is, like, extremely myopic in this game. Myopic? I think it's myopic. Oh, I thought that was, like, some sort of tainted wolf for a second. I guess not. They seem to get, like, hear my fire breath thing going on, though, because they always get attracted to it whenever I do that. All right, so we'll take a minute to just rest. My mace fighting is increasing. Cool. Four. How much do your bodies weigh? 40. Okay, so I still will get experience from that. God, if there were moss men outside of this, I wonder what could be in this creepy hut. Do I get any experience from punching the bush? I feel like I kind of deserve it. Where's the other moss man body? Uh, it looks like this one. Yeah, there's two more over here. Let me just go ahead and drag this one around. 30 food left. Uh, we can just scavenge the wolf corpses, though. Okay, so that gives me 
One more unspent statistic point. Uh, I will use that on, let's just keep doing endurance. Maybe we'll go do that to 20 and then we'll get a little bit of willpower for some other type of resistances. As far as athletics, we are now at athletics level five. I do believe that you have potential in this game in certain status. Oh yeah, here it is. So mace fighting, adventuring, and pyromancy. I didn't even know if I'd get this far in the game, so I just left it there. But yeah, these ones can go up to 20. The other ones cap out at 10. So you kind of got to pick those specialized from the beginning. I did them because supposedly pyromancy is hard to find in other places. Mace fighting just because I wanted some sort of combat thing. And then adventuring for the water skin and knife. Those were useful. Otherwise, you have to either like find or craft them. And that seems like a pain. And then it's hard to get food. And, you know, it's just a pain. Anyway, um... But yeah, those seem to be my level caps. Okay, so the other athletic skills. Uh, do we have mule? Carry capacity plus 20. Have we unlocked throw? So I I believe throwing the corpse around is the next best way to handle this. So let's just scavenge your body. I guess we can't really get any food from you. I guess we get the humanoid bones from that, so we'll just keep that there. We will skin the wolves. Here we go, so that brings us to 150 food, 240 food. Man, wolves are such a great source of food in this. 480 with just that, man. Word on the street is I contain multitudes. <laughs> Can't imagine why that would be. I don't have enough stamina to perform this. I love these scuffed ways of leveling, man. So let's throw this body back and forth. Three out of 26. Okay, so that is... Whoops. Oh, I guess it does take place in, like, discrete ticks. I will throw this body over here. I sound like someone reading a rap song in, like, a, in like a kind of more elegant way. I will throw this body over here. <laughs> like, like, uh... I don't know. I don't know. What to, do you guys remember? This is like a really old YouTube reference, but there used to be that like uh, LMFAO songs that were read out in a very proper way or like Katy Perry songs, stuff like that. It just sounds goofy. All right. So if I do this enough, then I will level in my athletics is what you're telling me. You're telling me that I'll get better if I keep throwing a body back. If only... <laughs> If only gyms were like this, you know, just grip, pick up a log or pick up another gym goer and throw them back and forth. Whoops. Here we go. We'll just rest again. All right. I think I'm going to have to do this if I want to keep leveling my athletics. Here we go. So I will just keep doing this for this, the free stat points because I, I want a stronger character. There are many encounters I would like to do that are, they look cool, but I can't do them because I'm too weak. So let's do it right now. So we have thrown around corpses for about 10 minutes and now we are at full athletics skill <laughs> I, I you know one thing i'll say is it would be really cool if there weren't such a low ceiling to these skills i'm i'm guessing that more stuff has yet to be added although uh oh actually yeah wait a minute 50 is the skill cap i have misspoken then i can't remember where you get to 50 though We'll have to find out later. Anyway, okay, it does appear as if there is more to do, but um, I guess we need to become more well-rounded or something. Oh, unlocked ability amplifiers. Here I am just an, an ignoramus and I don't know, although there are other levels. I do think that there is a potential system going on here and some of this stuff is super great. Uh, but the cool thing that we can do now is sprint. So this is gonna be useful for getting away from combats that we don't want to. So if we fight some evil scarecrow who's going to destroy us horribly, uh, there is a chance at coming back from that uh, because we can now escape. There is also some other one we could do in the thievery track, I believe, to like sneak away, but let's just go ahead and sleep. It is nighttime, I need some rest though. And there are probably evil people who are going to try to kill me downstairs. Relatable. All right, so if we go down, this is what I mean. Like some of the encounters are a little bit repetitive right here, but I do. Uh, he is chasing me, Flingle Gondle, Flingle Gongle. <laughs> I forget about how awesome my name is. Now we've unlocked the cripple ability, which is a, actually a really strong one and is good for. What is that good for? Slows down the target, which is great. So if we have to get away, we can do that and then run. Fantastic. I will 
Am I just going to set myself horribly on fire by doing this? I don't know if I would set the wood on fire, but oh well. All right, we will use the cripple attack on him. There we go. And what have I got now? Weaken body. Weaken the body of an enemy. Uh, I don't know if this is in the head with ceremonial dagger. Uh... I don't know if that is actually... I, I assume that is a, a status effect that has been applied to me. But I'm not positive about that. Yeah, it's gotta be. Okay, so duration point six. like that system, though. All right, lucky fur vest. That looks useful. And bear fur. Ooh, there are bears. Hence bear fur. Or there could just be bear furs, but no bears. How much does your... Okay, that weighs 60. So we've basically got about as far as we can with athletics here. Good enough. All right, let's go ahead and equip this. Uh, is that better than the other one? Let's just go generally by worth. Uh, no. It does improve our dexterity and backpack capacity, but... This... Uh, it lowers our fire resistance. Holy... It does, like, really good elemental resistances, but this one... I feel like this one is going to be better just for the dexterity improvement. Yeah, I'll do that right now. Even though this one is worth more. Maybe I'll save one around in case if I start going up against other types of elemental damage, but... Okay, here we go. And we got another statistic point. Uh, I guess we will keep putting that into endurance. Just keep improving our uh, stamina here. Uh, let's keep going off the map. Maybe we can start to get to more dangerous encounters now. We still aren't particularly good at raising a lot of money, but... Or should we start some kind of settlement around, maybe? Go back to your position. Uh, claim this region for yourself and establish a new settlement. Doing so will allow you to build freely. Store resources and items in a local stash and request transportation of heavy resources from traders worldwide. To me, it seems like we're a bit nomadic right now, maybe because we don't have a family. But I feel as though if we could set up maybe between these villages somewhere nearby water... Uh, I have never set up a settlement before, so this will be totally new to me, but let's go for it. You know, I mean, this is essentially a let's try type of video. Although, who is here? We do need more food before we get much further. I'm going to go to the hunting grounds to see if we can stock up on the meats. Basically, an Arby's right here. Swamp grass. Uh, we'll go over here. I have seen horrifying enemies in these hunting grounds, though, so we'll be careful as we go. Can you do armor swipping, uh, smithing, and weapon smithing? You can, I believe. Uh, isn't there a... Yeah, armor smithing and weapon smithing. Now, we could have gone down that whole track, you know, like just be a blacksmith in a town. But I kind of wanted to go for the main adventure here. Maybe we'll evolve into something like that. Or if people really like this game, maybe we'll end up doing, I don't know, like more videos on it. I just kind of wanted to do a basic overview, though. And What is that? Looks like a job for Flingle Gongle, Flingle Gondle. That does not look like a turtle, but now I could sort of see it. I believe that is a tortoise. Hmm. I will breathe fire on him for being different. We are not the same, turtle. I guess I should save that cripple attack for, um... Like, you know, when it might actually be useful. Clean up, uh, or we could, we could melee attack. What, do we just scavenge it? So we did get the turtle shell. You can hear me. Ooh, alligators, or crocodiles. I thought we were in Florida. Giant lizard with a big jaw. Looks like it could snap your head off with a single bite. Okay, so I guess that the flavor text is just kind of like information. You should run right here. Maybe I could like weaken him a little bit with my fire breathing attack and just see his HP. Okay, so he's got only 60 HP. I've never actually fought a crocodile, so I'm just kind of proceeding here with caution. I will just rest and wait for the crocodile's approach. I've guys, I've seen people duct tape crocodile mouths or alligator mouths. It must not be that different, right? Here in Florida. Let's just go for it. I think this is a better AoE attack. Okay, yeah, they're not that bad. Never mind. Honestly, uh, I've never had a crocodile, but gator tastes pretty good. It is actually quite delicious. It tastes like chicken. 
I know they say that about everything, but it, it really does taste like chicken. It's very good fried. Um, it's kind of like having calamari, sort of. Although I kind of think of calamari like onion rings. Oh, man, I could really go for a plate of that right now. Why did I stream while I was hungry? Okay, so they are in the water here. I'm assuming, though, eh, actually, these are waterborne enemies. I probably shouldn't have done a fire attack. So we dealt one damage to him there. Let's just see if we could figure out a bit more of this elemental system. What happens if I breathe fire on you when you're... Nope, he's just better at resisting it. Oh, now I've made everyone hungry. Yes, it's time to order a pineapple pizza. I don't have issue with pineapple pizza, but I don't think that it's that great or that bad. I think it's just like a topping. Man, now I could really go for some deep dish pizza. This tortoise is great at fighting. Why? What is his deal? Maybe they are like turtles that are really just coming out of the water. The turtles are harder than the gators. This is so bizarre. Would not have expected that, honestly. I guess I could run away, but... Man, he just takes a lot of damage. We're great with this mace now. Or the spiked club, or whatever it is. It's a two-handed weapon. Why is there a... Um... Yeah, let's just skin this one nearby here. I need to hide from these vicious tortoises. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to just sleep because I'm starting to get lower on stamina. We got an unspent statistic point. We'll spend that. All right, good enough. I want a little bit more daylight to fight this other tortoise. This is exactly the right type of time, though, for a bad enemy to come and, you know, kill me. Okay, so I can't actually fight them when they approach. Good, we will try to ignite you. This isn't really even that much of a good attack. I guess these are all just watery enemies. Whatever. Fine. Very well. Not really even dealing as much as the club attack. My club attack, just my left click, is pretty decent. Oh god, the one thing I... I should probably read my combat log more. I'm trying to figure out why it is that some enemies can just, like, walk up to you when you are powerless. Okay, now I'm wet. I accidentally stepped in that. Let's see if we can just aggro this tortoise. Whoops. Nah, he's too far over, over in the river. Over, over. Crude getta. Uh, resist acid. Resist nature. Nah, I don't really have anything right now, so I'll take that. And just a sheet of glass. Okay, that is random and kind of weird. Like an item in Resident Evil to find. You know how there's all these, like... There is a stuffed bear beside your crossbow bolts in Resident Evil. It's like an old game. Never There was an uh, original one before it, but no, I think this one was released in, like, what, fall or winter 2023? This is a relatively new release. Although I don't... I haven't been tracking how long Soul Ash 2 has been in development, so I don't know. I just don't know. I'm going to try to aggro this guy to get him out of the water, because this seems like not a great place to fight. Whoops. There we go. Okay, now I'm back on dry land. Uh, changing fire is this... Oh, so I guess they must be wet as well. It would be nice if I could get a little bit more information on their stats. I'm guessing enemies must dry off as they get out of the water, so I could really like bring them away from the body of water, assuming that they're doing the same thing to them as they're doing to me. Like, if I hit him with the fire blast again, see, it's going to do, like, nothing to him. All right, I will just wait for him to come over and then smash him with my club. Yeah, this one doesn't seem to be doing quite as much. All right, cool. 660 food. Uh, let's just pick up any other food that we add over here. What is that? Is that another body? It's a little tricky to see the corpses. Sometimes it feels like it would be nice to see, like, a... If they were just a little bit more saturated or highlighted. Although I do like the muted color palette. I think that's kind of nice. It's hard to believe that this guy has been balancing a monocle on his face for the entire time. Like he's just that much of a gentleman. <laughs> I insist. Alright, let's just go back to kind of move and explore. I 
I kind of play it like a point and click when I'm not, uh, you know, in combat. Like, just take it easy. But then if you're starting to approach a combat, you kind of micromanage more. I do think that this... This seems like a tricky movement system to get it to feel right, but... And it did feel weird, because I can do things like this, like back up just in place for a while. But it, it does feel fluid after playing it for a few hours. The only thing that I think is a bit funny... It would be nice if I could move forward diagonally, but... I just don't have enough keys on the keyboard for that. So, I don't know. We should. I feel like we should make another goal and go somewhere else. We've got now... Enough food to travel around, so we've got 630. We can make it a little ways here. Uh, although we won't have other encounters if we go this other way. I kind of want to set up my own settlement, just because I feel like that's the one part of the game we haven't seen. Maybe I could go over to this gloomy village, or even we had a troublesome encounter over here, like the lizard men. That'd be kind of sweet. I think we could probably scale up to slightly more difficult encounters now. Uh, what are the old pillars as well? Mm, rebel camp. Troublesome. I think we could probably go to Troublesome, maybe. Is there anyone I could eat over here? Swamp. I don't really like these swamp biomes, though. Maybe I'll go over to the rebel camp with the forest. And we'll just kind of look on the outside and see if there's anybody bad. I feel like it would be great if you could just clear out some of these trees, but they also seem useful for kind of sneaking in. Let's gather some berries here. And then we'll kind of rest on our way once we get to the edge of the village. And we could go from above, too. I do like the way that Z levels have been incorporated here. It feels a little bit like Caves of Cud. Uh, not due to that, but just overall. Hmm, this one is kind of far off. I used to think that all the encounters were located just directly in the middle of the map, but ever since we did that one hut, it seems that they're all over the map. Like, this one's a little closer to the edge. Okay, so you are Fenris. Straw shirt, straw pants, crude arrow times two. Okay, so this is an archer. Yeah, this is a more difficult encounter. Let's see if we can just attract one guy out. I didn't even mean to aggro this guy, but it is clear that humans have a way larger range of, like, sight here, which is cool. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Let's just see if he finds me behind this tree. I will just rest and wait a minute. Okay, he did find me. I think I'm just gonna jump out and attack him. Okay, so he has about 150 health, so he's about as strong as I am. Uh, this could be a really tough fight, and I might die, so I just am gonna... Look how it's going. So I'm at 136 and he's at 122. Oh god, no, more people are already showing up. Who are you? And who knows who else is here? I think I'm just gonna run. How many more are there? Okay, what if I breathe fire on them? I just want to see how many have followed me. Maybe if it's just two, I could fight them. 125. Okay, I'll go for it and see how this combat plays out. My pyromancy already rose. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll just go for more strength, though, right now, because... Uh, actually, what do I do? My movement speed. I don't know. I just feel like I'm so far from the edge of the map. Like, I, I kind of got in too deep. I didn't think they'd get aggroed this hard at me. If I run away... And they catch me, then I'm definitely dead. But I feel like I do have a chance in this. Yeah, I could just, like, keep backing away and then keep using my cripple attack. Because this other guy is not doing too well. And they will stop to shoot their arrows at me. Okay, that's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, see, he just shot another arrow at me. Yeah, I don't want to fight people yet. I thought this was just going to be... I don't know, I thought rebel meant mobs. Ooh, I have hit one of these things. Okay, we will go run up on this thing. Oh, God. Hopefully there's an exit on the other side. Do they actually chase me across Z levels, though? Hang on a second. I'm just going to rest here for a second. All right. I guess I'm just, like, totally gaming this right here. <laughs> uh, this is something I encountered in an earlier combat. Let's see what happens if I just go over here. Okay. Yeah, I'm totally safe. Uh, this is something that I, I think they could probably work on a little bit in the game. Like, if I just go to another Z level, 
they just totally chop, stop chasing me. Like, they are not interested. They're like, oh, he went up the hill. Leave him alone. <laughs> Which is kind of odd, you know? And I guess it's to make encounters for... I, I honestly don't know why it happens. I feel as though it shouldn't. Um, but that is kind of funky. Uh, yeah. Just slightly funky. It would be cool if that were changed, as this is in early access. I'm trying to think of better ways to... Because I feel like I do the, a lot of early access games. This is part of YouTube stuff, is just being the first person. It is fun when I discover new games. And, like, that is kind of something I've been doing since the beginning of the channel. Just, like, covering new stuff. But I do like this, and I like the look of this, and I wanted to get it. And I hate waiting all the time till stuff is totally in 1.0, but, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of, like, more polite ways to say... <laughs> suggest features rather than just saying like oh tons of random stuff should just always be added why have i gone back i don't know why i'm doing this i'm just a risk taker let me go run back that run ability is great man Ooh, i really like that it lasts for about like 10 or 12 turns that is quite useful. I'm going to manually run off the edge of the map here because they might be chasing me i just don't think we were ready for this encounter man so I would say troublesome encounters we're still not quite ready for. So I do like that high skill ceiling that you can, uh, you know, do there. It seems funny that the hunting grounds would just be totally empty after you're done with them, doesn't it? What other villages do we have over here? Do we have any other, like, normal settlements over here? Eh, let's kind of go back to the area we started in, uh, although there aren't that many other encounters. Uh, I don't know. I guess we could just do some normal hunting, but... Most of the world is just nothing. It's kind of like those really old Elder Scrolls maps where the whole world is just no one. So we're in Birch Woods right here. Can we set up our own settlement? Uh, all right, we need a settlement name, guys. All right, we are beginning the ambitious new settlement of Florgida. Who lives there? It is just me, of course. All right, so we have gained... Oh, wow, cool. We gained construction. Um... Florida buildings for us. We can do some building in this game, so I'd like to give this a try. Uh, we are going to need some sort of axe, which we just don't have. But, I mean, this is ours now, right? So, why not? Let's go ahead and see if we can explore the region, see if there's anything useful here. And if not, then we'll just starve to death and go back to town and die. Oh, it does seem as though we've got a blueberry over there. The minimap is pretty useful for just spotting little plants and things like that that bunch up as you go. It'd be nice if we could plant some seeds here or something like that. Do we have... We do have raspberry seeds. With enough of this seed, we could grow it into a bush one day. Split stack. Okay, that is useful. Um, hmm. You know, not really seeing anything like, I guess we could, if we got an axe, we could probably down some trees. Although you don't uh, have one right now. So maybe we need to go ahead and do some more of the like crafting, you know, uh, survival element of the game. There does seem to be that whole kind of facet of it. And we've just kind of been playing as like a, like a murderous adventure boy for the whole time. The one thing that I, I think would be nice to in this game would be if the food and water were a little bit more forgiving not that i don't like it but also too just there are times where it's like oh like i basically need to pick berries all the time just to subsist it'd be nice if i could be less reliant on just killing wolves that randomly appear sometimes in order to survive i think for now let's go back to town and see if we can really get anything otherwise I might have to be bound for a life of picking cotton in order to raise funds in order to drink water and eat food for the rest of my life. God, everyone is afraid of me. I heard that you're planning on ambushing me. Anything? In, I guess new events don't... They must not appear. It'd be kind of cool if events came and went, too, because the one thing that's kind of tricky is... I don't know. I mean, maybe they do. I guess I haven't played enough to know yet. But you do kind of run out of stuff to do on the map quickly, you know? And it seems like for a living world, you should maybe have more stuff going on. We've already spent all of our money paying the government to start a settlement. 
I just have to go ahead and see like what we can craft here. Some of the stuff that we got from the swamp though was pretty uh, valuable. Even the crude mask. I believe we have one on us. Yeah, it's not showing me the gear on my body, so... Whoops. No, not my water skin. I don't want to sell that. Wolf fur. There we go. All right, I have to do like a little bit of trading in town just to see if there's anything I can do here that is useful. All right, supposedly the best way to improve in your construction ability is to just build and then destroy stashes. So we're just going to attempt this. It'd be nice if you could see a zoomed out view of the region. I don't have any of the required tools and I am somehow like willing things into existence. I'm not 100% sure how, but we'll just continue down this road. I have my building menu. We will just put a stash like here. There is a stash. Wait a minute. Oh, what? What? I guess I can just do this. Oh, cool. Ah, so I couldn't do this before, but I can totally do it in my settlement. Supposedly, the best way to level this is just by doing this. Hang on a second. I got to make sure that I can get rid of them, too. All right, let's demolish this stash. Oh, I'm missing a hammer. How did I make it in the first place, though? <laughs> it's really bizarre. Um, all right, this is going to be really odd, but what I'm about to do is... uh. Just build a ton of them out of nothing. This looks like a job for Flingle Gongle Flingle Gondle. I just gain more construction by just willing them into Okay, some I, I seem to not understand this game at all. So I don't I don't know how I created those. Um there may be some other thing about building materials. I have my backpack. I don't see any indication of building materials or what I have right now. I do have this mysterious pane of glass. Let's just continue as if it, I knew what I were doing right here. Stone pillar, unusual carvings, required... Okay, re resources, sandstone times... See, this one doesn't say any required resources. Oh, I can just totally build more of them, though, somehow, with my mind. Funny that you can just basically make experience out of nothing. I do believe this is supposed to be like the dominant strategy for how to create these things. <laughs> That's kind of wild. But my construction continues to improve. So are we actually able to build all of these? I don't have a hammer with me, but apparently I have sandstone. Where is the sandstone in my inventory? I see no sandstone, but... Yes, a stash house. Welcome to my mustache. Uh, all right, I will just continue then. L for building. Stone table. Oh, I could be like one of the cultists then. What would we like it to be? We could, oh, you know, we do have those shells though, like from the tortoise and the, but I got rid of the shells, didn't I? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I sold those at a store a while back. Let's use dirt. Uh, is dirt? No, this isn't really like a dirt wall. Alright, let's just try polish sandstone wall. Sandstone, grains of sand cemented together. I don't seem to have any. Oh, I don't have any, never mind. Okay, so then this is the all your options. It would be kind of nice if these were grayed out. Because I can't see, yeah, I'm like, I'm not just materializing all of these things. Although creating stashes, I do believe just forever can improve your, like, um, your, your building, or your construction ability, which is kind of crazy. So now at the very least, we do have some place that we can store our crap. Let's keep exploring around the region. I do believe there are some more berries to look at here. Um... Yeah, and then what other things come up? So, like, when I try to take this log... Cut wood. I'm missing a wood cutter. All right, so we need to go find some hammers and wood cutters, I suppose, if we want to start downing the trees around us. You can't just materialize stashes out of nothing forever. You've got to put something together, man. So let's see if we can find something or craft something like that. Um, inventory. I'm probably just going to have to get back to you on this because this is... Weapons, ammunition, clothes, jewelry. I don't actually know if we have the recipe. I just have to figure this out. All right, so after a little bit of searching, we went around to the, uh, where are we right now? We are in this mountainous town of Bardom Keep, which is a totally different area from any place that we had started. We can't really go up and down Z levels right here, but we had to navigate our way around. It is kind of like a dwarf fortressy looking, uh, well, you know, fort, for lack of a better term. But we have located the tool maker in town, and this is helpful. 
Uh, not really trading goods, but uh, ordering a product. So I wonder if he creates this for us right now, but he does have hatchets. So he could order this for six. I guess we... Oh, we need metal and wood. Interesting. I wonder if he's selling any of those. So if we were to trade goods, we could buy an iron ingot. We've been saving up our money for an iron ingot. I guess we just need some wood. Oh, we could also get spruce wood from him as well. That's not so bad. Okay, we trade that. So we buy the goods from him, and then we order a product. Which I guess we'll put in... Oh, I already kind of had it. Oh, maybe we could have used his supplied goods as well. All right, that is kind of cool. Okay, so then order. Placed orders, so then I guess this is the amount of time we need to wait. We could probably just sleep in front of him for a day. Oh, it's okay. I'll just sleep in front of you for an entire day. Oh, cool. He's doing his job. Flingle gongle, flingle gondle. So what is this over here? This is his tools, display, chair. What is he sitting on right there? This is kind of like a cursed existence here. You see, it says that he's wearing it. He doesn't have an iPad. Okay, he's at the anvil. All right, so I'm just going to sleep next to him until he's done. I don't trust you, man. Finish your job. Finish your job. I managed to sleep without disturbance. Been working with tools for as long as uh, your order is finished. You received iron hatchet. Fantastic. And we also did find a, uh, a mallet somewhere. So we... That was just in a chest at random. But what else could I order from you? This is quite useful. Now that I know about you, I can look for a city with a tool maker again. So what else does he have access to? He does have a pickaxe. Is he going to be able to supply me with the... I do have a spruce log, scissors, hammer. Um, I might even just get a couple more things from him. Bone knife. Oh, maybe we could have made a bone knife before because we do have good access to knives. Ah, there is so much cool stuff to explore here. Oh, a head candle. <laughs> is that like a rust uh, kind of reference? Or was that just a thing? I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I think we will leave this town now that we have the basic rudiments of what we were searching for. But this is a very cool, like, organization to a place that has all been procedurally generated. So that is quite nice. Um, okay, outward we go. Uh, and we do have some food on us, only 162. Again, it is kind of tricky to find food, I guess, until we become, like, agricultural. But it seems as though we need to be nomadic until we settle down. I'm going to travel. Uh, where am I going to go? I guess I'll have to go back up to the spider area and hope that I can find some wolves in it. Because I don't know what else I'm going to eat. I mean, I don't have a lot of money. I can't just keep picking cotton for raspberries all <laughs> What a, what a sad life. Yeah, he was picking cotton for raspberries, loser. All right, but here, I'm not really looking for the spiders. I'm looking for the wolves. So I guess we'll just take some of these guys out before we go back to our settlement. Again, I'm not really fighting you for your spiders, but... There is a... The deer keep running away. Oh, no, I want to kill this deer. Man, even the deer can't fight me in combat. I fear no spider now. Look, at the, these... Goddamn deer are just looking at me, man. It does help me take out my rage to just click on them and see the characters slightly nudge against them. I am placated. There we go. I mean, combat... I do like that that combat can be as fast or slow as you want it to be. A deer! Deer! Alright, I'm sprinting after this deer like it's the Olympics. Uh, I will breathe fire on this goddamn deer. No, he's getting away. I've just seared his flesh. Wait a second. No, no. Oh, okay, now I seem to have gotten myself into some sort of infinite loop. That could be the death of me, though, if you enter one of those types of things. All right, cool. So we got 360 food. That might be enough for the crossing. I mean, I guess worst comes to worst, you could just kind of enter a like a forest region and pick some berries, but I do feel like it is a little hard to locate food. Uh, or I wish it went a little further, but I mean, maybe that is life in dark fantasy times. Anyway, uh, I guess now that we have food, let's try to get out of here and then 
go back to our settlement so that we could set some stuff up. I want to chop down some trees, man. Get some buildings up. And then probably die of starvation. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. I don't get... No, I don't get any food. Uh, come on. Don't you want to eat giant spider flesh? All right. Um, well, we've done it. We've re-entered Florgida, and it's time to cut down all the trees. We do have a hatchet now, so... Ooh, cool. We can do that now. Um, we can do that, or we could cut the wood, I guess, with the hatchet we got. Do we, we don't really need a saw then, I suppose. So what do we now have in our inventory? Oh, this is supposedly a very good money-making technique. If we find some, you know, like, uncommon sort of... Oh, what is this useful for? Salvage to train leather working. Ooh, cool. That is kind of sweet. I guess we could do more of that. Um, eh, we have a couple new ways of making money, though. I feel like... Pick up, cut wood. I feel as though if you were to go further in this game, you'd always kind of be on the borderline of starvation. Although that is a very Kenshi-like place to be. Um... I think we would probably need to depend on a town a little bit more, because I'm just noticing the nomadic playstyle sort of peters out after you've already kind of extincted all of the animals in a region. You don't have condition on your tools, do you? No, they, they seem to just kind of continue to work forever. But if we do more of this, we cut wood. So are we actually leveling anything as we do that? Constru uh, construction, I believe we got by stash building. Yeah, there are a few things where it's like, shouldn't my athletics go up if I'm cutting down trees? Or whatever? I, I don't know. I suppose not everything, but I, I must be training something by doing all this wood cutting, you know? Uh, that would be interesting. Oddly enough, though, we don't get the option to build anything here. I wonder if we could do some other type of construction here. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep on building stashes. Or uh, what you do get in front of you is a list of all the things that you could be, that you could do. Give me a second, I just gotta look this up. We've got, um... I'm just gonna look into more of this stuff. Construction, claiming a region, uh... Carpentry is separate, though. Oh, so cutting uncommon woods grants us... Ah, so we need to find more uncommon woods. See, that is not, like, immediately kind of intuitive. So I guess, eh, though, these are birch woods. These technically not birch. I guess I'm going to have to find birch trees. This is very kind of runescape-y, I feel. Okay, I need to go locate some of these things. All right, uh, you know, despite our efforts, we have, um, we have not managed to locate any of the wood that will advance my skills. So I'm looking for uncommon woods in order to improve my carpentry, which sounds crazy, but I guess if I find a palm tree or something, that could be useful. In the interim, let's go return to a town because I am running out of food. And now I could see myself living realistically as a medieval person. So here if I go over to this boy. No, you don't trade anything with me. What about you? What if I just stand on top of the fire? Your family doesn't have what I'm looking for. What if I sold you the... Jeez, we're going to make a lot of money from selling all this maple wood. Look at that man. Trade. There is money to be had in the wood trading business. Uh, more maple wood. And more wood wood. There we go. Another 28. That's a lot of gold, man. Ooh, this really appeals to, like, the economist side of my brain. We could trade the wood for meat. Which we don't really know where the meat is coming from. But, again, it, you know, it is what it is. Uh, if we cut down this wood, what is this? What wood is available here? So, I guess the light green trees are just regular trees. We just cut down all the trees in town and sell them to the trader and they're somehow happy with them. I love the way that things are in medieval times. Just the exact opposite of modern. Why'd you cut down the trees, man? I was trying to sell them for food. So we have birch woods. I guess we go to, like, Taiga, Taiga, or Blissful Pasture. Where am I going to find... Is that, like, a tropical village or something? Maybe the lizard men will have something useful there. You also do get resources known on each encounter area, like... Did we find any of those here? Maybe setting up somewhere where we have 
some type of useful resource around that would be useful. Yeah, of course, it would be useful to have the useful, useful resource. <laughs> what am I saying? Sometimes I just catch myself. Oh, God, I've been streaming for a while now. Yeah, it all turns to mush, man. We haven't even encountered the Mushmen yet. Speaking of which, timeless forest. Let's go to the Tega. Hmm. I think it would also be nice if you were in a safe location if you didn't actually have to go to the map edge. Because that is kind of nice at the beginning, but it does kind of get old fast. You know what I mean? Uh, what if we go over here to you? Although I guess we're going further south. I mean, the wood we're looking for, at least listed in this guide, is spruce, maple, bamboo. Oh, wait a minute. Maple was one of the ones. All right. I'm just going to go back here. I guess we'll find more in the birch woods. Let me just extensively test this for a second. So then this is a regular tree with regular wood. Right, but if we find any of those orangey trees like we had at our home base, then they will be more useful. I'm just not seeing too many of them. I guess that they're like less of a common thing to find. Although I do like the world generation. It is satisfyingly, you know, mixed up and crazy. I guess we just have to explore. I mean, there is the gatherer boy lifestyle where we could like, you know, forego the hunting, the, nomad the nomadism. Live a life of, ooh, my adventuring has increased. Adventuring seems to go up with practically everything you do. It's just useful for the starting tools you get. Exploring, discovering POIs. Yeah, I think we're just uh, going back home to our base. All right, let's go back to Florgita. All right. Good to be home. Ah, the smell of home. All right, I, I guess I'm just looking for birch trees now. Probably not going to find them, though. I've heard that the best way to improve your... Okay, there we go. Construction is infinite stash. Here we go. So if we just cut down this one. Cool. And then what is that? Whoa, I have a lot of options for what to do with that. What is this? Stack of leaves. Provisionary resting place. How did we create that? I didn't do that. Or does a tree just fall down and turn into a bed? No, the other trees didn't do that. Okay, what if we just grab that from the ground? Or we cut the wood? Hmm. Cutting uncommon woods, salvaging firewood in bulk... Oh, salvaging the firewood in bulk to gain carpentry experience. So if we go over here and we... Is there a salvage button? Or maybe I don't even have the tool for it. Um, let's go over to cut wood. Uh, then we can cut wood. Oh, maybe we could sal salvage, salvage, salvage. I don't actually have a salvage option here. Let me just go double check in my inventory one more time. Um, this wood, split stack, drop. Yeah, I don't seem to be leveling up. All right, I would say that it's a little bit more involved here then to get their car our carpentry up, but you can start to construct a base and stuff based on what I've seen, but I've just got a little bit more to go before that. Okay, I'm an idiot, but I just figured it out. So you can salvage items in your inventory. Like, I could salvage this firewood because I don't have the skill to... I do not have the skill. Uh, I'm just going to... Hold down. Actually, no, that is my recording key. I'm just going to press it repeatedly until I get the construction skill up or the carpentry skill up. So that should be giving me more skill. I'm guessing that this is going toward crafting wearing this thing. And let's look at my skills. And my carpentry is indeed improving. Okay, so this is getting me better at making firewood arrows. Uh, and soon I'll be able to make wooden floors, walls, and log walls. So we just need to go find firewood, which I guess is done by cutting down trees. It's a little bit of an involved process, but yeah, I mean, I guess that that's how it was supposed to be. Hopefully we'll get some firewood out of some of these trees. Um, cutting down the trees. Salvage firewood in bulk. Although I'm not really... Uh, let's just see if we can... Cut wood. 
Okay, so then that gives me more. Oh, I do get the firewood in my inventory. Okay, so then just salvaging more of this. We need a lot of this. Great. Okay, so cut down a tree, salvage the wood. I don't really know what it means to salvage the wood, but whatever. I guess it is what it is. We cut down the wood. And then once we do some of that, then we can finally build a house. All right, this took me a while to figure out, but we can take maple wood. We're just going to put in 117 of these and craft tons of firewood. Oh, I guess this is my... This is my exhaustion. I'm so tired because I haven't gone to sleep in days. Um, oh God, let's just interrupt that for a minute. We will sleep until morning. I still have enough food. Let me sleep again, sleep throughout the day. We go back into our inventory. Okay, here we go. We go back for crafting. Finish crafting these things off. Now I have the energy to do this and I'm going to make like a hundred firewood. I was thinking as I did this, like there's no way that I don't have the amount of wood to get slightly more carpentry. Although I do like this menu. This is very nice. A very clear feedback here. And you could see as I'm starting to get more fatigued. We could do this with apparently, what are we doing it with? Maple wood right here. I'm probably using up all the valuable stuff that we'll need to buy food in town, though. Let's just X out for a minute. Go back into our inventory. Okay, now we should have... Oh, no, I guess we don't get it. Never mind. I guess we have to finish the entire recipe in order to finish crafting it. That is slightly odd. I feel as though my inventory should be filling up, but I guess that's the way they do it here. All right, progress 100%. Now I have 117 firewood. That should be all that I need to salvage uh, all of this. Nice. That totally worked. Okay, now do I have plus one carpentry? How many carpentry do I have now? Did that accidentally... Okay, I have ten carpentry skill now. I have more than I need. So now I can go ahead and start getting built up with the uh, wooden floors. Cool. All right, cool. So oh, I thought there was like a little bit more of an animation about this, but... Wood times one. Now wooden walls. I can build up wooden walls around me. Ooh, fun. That's kind of cool. I guess, do I need to be standing right next to it in order to build it? Why am I not building that one? Give me a second. Okay, I gotta do the action over by it if I'm not standing right on top of it. Uh, I have almost sealed myself in with the chests now. <laughs> oh no. Let's go ahead and demolish that one. All right, so it takes a minute for me to dematerialize the immaterial chests. But now, cool, I am starting to make my own, like, uh, building. Let's see if we can make some stairs on this as well. Do we have a stairs recipe? I do believe there is a stairs recipe, but, I mean, hey, we've got our own uh, building. Not everyone can claim that uh, amazing feat to have created a building. So we can go build ourselves a little hut right here. I don't think anyone's going to attack us because we don't have anything. I'm just like a hobo with a monocle running around the environment, nomadically killing spiders and hoping that wolves will come along so that I can eat meat for the rest of the night. Uh, but now I'm going to go chop down the rest of this. I am the master of my land, man. It's kind of cool. I do believe you got, um, that was like the first one. I, I don't think you have uh, weather in it. I could get myself some protection from the elements. Although, I guess one of the more scuffed things about this game to begin with is the fact that you can just sleep outside on the floor at any moment just by willing it right then and there. <laughs> Which, don't get it twisted, I do like that. I'll be disappointed if they get rid of that feature that you could just sleep out in the open. That's a good time, man. But here we go. We've got our own house. Walled and floored. And I feel like that that is about what I would like to achieve. You could kind of RP as like a townsperson. Although I feel like, I don't know, I've shown a couple of the paths. You could be like a merchant. You could be an adventurer. And I, from what I hear from people who played the first game, that is kind of nice about this game. That you have some more options. And it's not just like, you know, fight everyone. No, like there is a little bit more... Uh, there isn't so much like the illusion of choice, it's more like there are several things that you could potentially do and would lead to a viable living strategy. You could just be a guy who lives in nature. Um, again, I do think that the character customization here is pretty important for like, I don't know, enjoyment and general customization for the user experience. Uh, although, I don't know, I am but a, I am but a nameless troglodyte. 
and I have not built windows. So I guess I'll finish this off. Um, I don't really know what to do with my house. Maybe I'll uh, adopt a dog or something now, but I think that's about all I've got for today on Soul Ash. I guess I could continue this profile. Yeah, let me know if you guys want to see more of this game. Um, it's a bit of a busy day, so I think I'm going to put a bookmark in it there as I floor my house, but... Um, yeah, that's about it. I'm just going to be a troglodyte sitting in his half-floored house. This is honestly not all that uh, different from my real life right now. And I'm just going to stay in the house and look out and make sure that no one tries to rob me. Um, but that's Soul Lash 2. I do like this game. I'm going to be curious to see what happens in the rest of Early Access. But um, yeah, that's about it for now.